Anyway, hello Cardiff, morning. Right, let's smash it, let's do this. Okay, so normally in talks, I kind of speak for 40 minutes, maybe an hour. I, got, I make lots of slides, I love gifts. And so I've got about 20 minutes here this morning and I thought what I could do is I could do a cut down or I could keep the same amount of information and just talk three times as fast. It's Saturday morning, you've all had coffee that's super strong, so let's do it. So, right, this talk is about love. And specifically, it's about doing what you love and loving what you do. Now, I know they're super easy, simple statements to make, so, so easy. And we're lucky enough to work in the creative industries, and I think I like to take stock of that instantly. Because, you know, it, it's hard to love what you do sometimes when someone says, make the logo bigger. Can you make that pop? That yellow's a bit yellow. Can you make that a bit more yellow? It, it's, it's really easy to lose sight of it, but what I like to do is just to stop and kind of think, actually, like, no, like, this is so, we're so lucky to be able to create something from nothing for someone else who give you a little bit of cash to make something. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many times you have to make the logo bigger. It doesn't matter how many, you need to make that white a little bit more white. You know, you've kind of just got to do what you love and embrace it because that's part and parcel. Like, nothing is perfect. So I like to often take a step back and just go, we're so damn lucky to be able to make stuff. And so I try and sort of live by this statement all the time is to just, just do the things that excite you, engage you, do things that make others feel delight, feel warmth, and then just love what you do. Love every single step of the craft and just, just, just do it with honesty and heart and purity and stuff. Right? Okay, cool. Right, let's go. So, hello, my name is Gavin Strange. I've not introduced myself. I live in beautiful Bristol, just across the road with a lovely big bridge. I live with my wonderful jewelry designer wife, Jane, and hang out with our awesome adopted greyhound, Arnie, who um, I like to f completely flood my Instagram feed with tons of pictures of of Arnie. So by day, I'm a senior designer at the wonderful Arm and Animations, also in Bristol. And I get to do all sorts there. My official title is a senior designer for the digital team. But over the years, and with the stuff that I'm excitedly going to show you now, is I've, I've managed to work with lots of different departments from the, from the feature films to the commercials department to um, uh, to the rights department, just, just being excited and showing love and showing honesty and saying, hey, look, you know me for this, but I also do this, you know, and then sharing side projects, sharing the things that you love, it's going to take you in, in different ways. So that is a dream, dream, dream job, and I adore it, but you don't stop being creative at five o'clock, at six o'clock. You don't just knock off, do you? You don't just go, well, time's up, off to the pub, peace. You know, you, you still have ideas, you still want to make things, you're still you. That's the thing, just being a creative person and just loving stuff is you want to continually make things and make things happen. So I kind of found early on when it was in my sort of the start of my career, when I wasn't very good, you know, I, I don't have a university education. I, I was self-taught when I, um, I did two years a BTEC National Diploma in Graphic Design and sort of was truly terrible. It was, it's a running joke with my, my friends that like, how, how, how have you got this incredible job, what, what happened? And what happened was I discovered that whatever you put in is what you get out. And then as soon as you start multiplying that with time and energy and effort, the bigger things that come out of the other end of it. So I had to find that actually natural talent wasn't bestowed on me when I was younger. You have to really, really work for it and teach yourself and learn and just, just pursue things. But that means that you don't have any expectations on yourself. So as soon as I was this sort of 17, 18 year old and just experimenting and learning and trying to copy and duplicate all the l awesome stuff that I loved, I found that it was just sort of strengthening me more and more to go, well, actually, maybe I can have the confidence to pursue something. So those early years were super, super formative for me. 
And what also happened in those early years was I formed uh, Monica, a, a brand for myself. I basically love rap and I love sort of people with alter aliases like uh, MF Doom and Aesop Rock and just, just that the people have this creative pseudonym or alias. And I thought, I want a really cool one. I want a really cool name that people remember. And I couldn't think of one. So uh, I just went, oh, jam, oh, factory. Sweet, okay, this is an available domain name. Bosh, I'll go with it. That's, that's done. Um, so over I just use this, this in my own time to, to make and do the things that I love, that I'm interested in, in the styles that I'm interested in, in the, in the stuff from graphics, for rap crew, big fan of, to my friend had a, a, a an abandoned swimming pool that he turned into a, to a skate park, to political inspired stuff, to photography manipulation, to stupid temporary tattoos. And then that, that, that also bleeds into other disciplines and areas because the same way that you don't stop being creative at five, six, well, I only like future or bold and red. Like, that's not how it works. You're influenced by all these different things, and you just want to try and experiment. And, you know, when you just go on something like Pinterest or Instagram, you I don't know, understand any of it, but I love it. You know, that just that feeling where you're just in total adoration of just someone else's work. Like, I like just trying to pick that apart and dissect it and just, well, what makes that so awesome? Or why do I love it? What, what could I take that from that? What can I learn? What can I do with it? So... That means that over the years I've just got into sort of photography and, and image making and then naturally from photography comes filmmaking because with the DSLR revolution it just turned out that you can basically, you just point a DSLR camera stuff, hit record and it looks awesome. And then because it looks awesome, you want to make something awesome. So then technology gives you this loop of you're like, damn, look, that looks super cinematic. Well, I better make something cinematic to make it worth it, you know? So it's that really nice that things just push you forward and just that excitement is your driver. It doesn't care about the technology, your skill level, um, whether you can or cannot do something, whether you have the money to do something, just the excitement pushes you forward, and that's super rad. But then I've also been really interested in, in characters, design, and, and just, I think it's just having faces on things and just, just literally what a character means and how you are drawn to something, you know, anything. You can pick up a rock and put a smiley face on it. You go, oh, it's a rock. You know, it's, it's just the simplistic power of, of character. And then working at Auburn has only just enriched that further. So I just like trying my hand at character design and just whatever happens. But then also, I'm sure a lot of you that work in, in pixels like myself, you also, cr again, you don't just, you're not just restricted to pixels. You also want to make stuff in the real world. You want to see where that can go. And so I then like taking that character stuff and then seeing where that can go in the real world. And so just got into making vinyl toys and sculptures and collaborations and stuff. But then you know where that's going to take you because you're just super excited on things. And as long as you put yourself out there, you share your work, whatever it is, whether it's a personal project or it's a project, who cares who's looking? You know, when they're looking at your body of work, it's irrelevant whether you did that at 3 a.m. in the morning or for Nike. Like, they don't care. You know, it, it's, it's about what, what it looks like and what you've, what you've done. You know, who cares what you say? It's what you've done. So just then having that work out there and pushing yourself, you don't know where it's going to lead. So it led to um, some charity sculptures that I designed and made um, Gromit and Least in Shaun and City over in Bristol. And then you never know where that's going to go. Never in a million billion years did I think that I would have the opportunity to have a four metre tall giant robo mech grommet stand outside of Bristol. This blows my tiny mind. This shouldn't happen, but it did happen. And you, just because you've just got to put yourself up. Oh, you bugger. <laughs> Real good? Are you still with me? Good? Good. Good. Um, uh, what I want to talk about is, is kind of dissecting what I've learned, what things that have happened to me in the last 12 months, and constantly having a, an evaluation of what has happened, how has it happened, how have I responded to it, what, what can I do better, what did I do badly, and just, I just think it's really good to always, 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 always. Um, so, these are some things that have happened to, to me in the last, last 12 months, I managed to write a million years, through talking and, and sharing stories, I've had the opportunity to visit new countries and new cultures and new experiences. Um, through the things I just showed you, just had the opportunity to see how design and art and creativity can impact and help um, charities and, and how much more it means than just getting a like on Instagram. It's actually caring for someone and helping someone and seeing, seeing where your, your, your honest creativity can, can help, what, what it can do. Um, 
through um, just look and, and preparation and opportunities, managed to collaborate with a, with a film star. This is um, Oscar-nominated actress Sally Hawkins. Um, I haven't got time to talk about this today, but just, just putting yourself out there, seeing where it can go. Um, I was talking to Ian about this um, a little bit earlier, but for some reason man managed to get on national television on CBBC. A friend of mine, Ricky, has got a, a, a CBBC show called Art Ninja, and um, myself and, and Sarah are a part of that. And so that's another wonderful thing that just reaffirms that actually being silly and being honest and trying to be creative and what that can inspire in other people, specifically children, and getting them to make stuff. And again, that's a totally mad situation that I never thought would happen. This is definitely never something I ever thought would happen. Ended up doing an animation workshop with, with my old mate Kate, um, a princess, got heckled by a future king of England. Again, don't know about this, I'll tell you about it afterwards. Um, of all my work, um, the things I've done over the years and just had a chance to, to share that and to celebrate that. Again, something that I never thought an opportunity that, that I would get. But all of this stuff, all of this stuff that I've just shown you, I'm not qualified for any of it. There's no real reason why that should happen to me, but I kind of discovered that actually it's about making the opportunity for yourself. You know, you've kind of got to, through manipulation of yourself and through your skills and through your channels and trying to get your work out there, but also just being a good person, being a lovely person, you know, we keep coming back to the theme of love, but actually just being honest and just putting things out there and displaying you all of you, all the things that you love, all the things that you're interested in, all the positive sides of you out there, and then you never know what opportunities are gonna come. But if there's anything that I hope you come away with today, I hope it's that you know that you can use emoticons in Photoshop layer names. I don't care, if you go now, go to sleep for the remainder of the talk, know this. It'll make your developers so happy, or won't, because they're like, oh God. Have you got the layer that's pig face, it's really addictive underscore, Anyway, right, oh my God, I've been going for 10 minutes. Right, okay, let's machine gun through this. So I kind of believe that things, well, I think, I think so, I think, I don't know, don't believe me, I don't know, I'm just some idiot with a mic and a, a clicker, make it up for yourself, but I believe that time and energy are two really, really important factors of doing things. But let's talk a little bit about time, which you don't have much of. And I find it super inspiring to, to, to look at other people's paths, to, my favorite thing is anyone that I look up to, I like just going on their Wikipedia page if they have one or, or whatever it is, and just look at how they got to where they are. What routes did they take? And you can be guaranteed it's never as simplistic as they were born, they are now famous for the thing that you love them for. Never, 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 never. It's always zigzagging, it's always interesting, it's always taking you in a different route. But as much as it's great to look at that, don't follow it. You've kind of got to carve your own path. You can't see, it's a, it's a brilliant gif. If you can see it, it's brilliant, but if you can't, it doesn't matter. But you've just got to go forwards and sort of take inspiration from the people that you love and almost like get in a parallel groove, a parallel path to them. But just don't worry if it veers off in another direction. You've kind of got to, yeah, take, take as much as you can from that thing you're inspired by, but don't let, it, don't let it totally gravitate towards it. You've got to be on your own path. Because talking about time, I kind of, the most exciting thing is that actually, I don't care who you are, how much money you have, or how much money you don't have, what position you have, what age, race, sex you are, we've all got the same 24 hours. That's never been any different, and it never will be any different. It's totally, totally the same. It's fair game for everyone. Me and Mozart are time buddies. He has the same amount of time to, to compose incredible pieces of music. I mean, <clears throat> it's given that he's a genius, <laughs> so that's a bit of a head start, but... So what if, it's a if he was a genius but he stayed at home and never did anything, then we'd never know who he is. You might be a genius, but you still gotta execute it. You still gotta put in the time. You still gotta actually do something with it. So it's all well and good having this talent and skill, but if you don't do anything with it, then you're never gonna go anywhere. Because I kinda believe it's about working smarter, not harder, really. I think it's, because it, otherwise we could just all stand up here and every talk ever would be, we'll just work 23.5 hours and sleep for that and you'll be dead by the time you're 22. That's not true. You've kind of got to, you've got to decide where to spend those ticks and tocks. You really do. So actually, it's about finding the groove that works for you and, and it's, it's working smarter, not working harder. And that's something that I'm discovering at the minute. I'm starting a, a company with my wife as a, as a side project called Strange. And we just had to figure out where, how we were going to do this, because Jane's a jewellery designer by day, and I've got my wonderful job at Ardman. And it's like, well, okay, well, every Tuesday and Thursday from 6pm until <coughs> midnight, 
this is when we're working on this. We'll, you know, we've got to get food sorted. Like, make a routine. You've kind of got to just identify the time. You can't find the time. You've got to make the time. So, like, planning all these things out and just working out where you're gonna where you're gonna fit these things in, because as well. And don't get freaked out on this. It's like it's never too late to start something. Like, never, never too late. You can't see this, but this is some robots trying to learn football. Bless them. You know, you it doesn't matter how old you are, because it's really easy to get sucked into something and just go, well, I didn't start that when I was. 18, so I'm never going to do it. Like, some of the most famous people in the world have done wonderful things. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but Jack Kirby didn't write The Fantastic Four, which is now sort of the precursor for the modern Marvel age as we know it, until he was 44 years old. Diana Porter, a brilliant jeweler in Bristol, she didn't know she wanted to be a jewelry designer until she was 50 years old. She was a teacher and then went, mm, this is not for me. I'd lo I love jewellery, I'm really interested in it. Retrained, opened a business, now one of the most successful jewellers in, in Bristol. Um, Henry Rousseau was ridiculed his entire life um, until he was 61 years old. He was a self-taught painter. People mocked him, ridiculed him, never had any critical fanfare, but he stuck at it. He just loved it and just did it and just despite everything, just carried on going. It wasn't until Picasso threw him a party when he was in his 60s and all the younger artists were like, this dude's sick. And so he then got his fame by that. But then it, it's not about fame and recognition. Um, Paul Cezanne didn't achieve recognition until he was dead. I mean, I don't, have, I don't want to say, well, you know, you might die. And that's, what, that's, when you get, that's when you get your recognition. But, you know, it, it doesn't matter. you just got to strive anyway and, and just do it because it doesn't matter how young or how old you are. I didn't start skateboarding until I was 19. I didn't start drumming until I was 22nd, uh, 27. And I only just started dance classes at 33 years old, which is terrible because I spend my whole time going, oh, five, six, seven, eight. Ugh, ugh, and, and I feel like a right idiot, but at least I'm doing it. At least I've taken that step to do it. And no matter how stupid or rubbish I am and I feel like an old man, at least I'm sort of pursuing that thing. You know, you've just, you've just got to do it. But then you've got to find different ways to incorporate that anyway. I'm better at designing skateboards than I am riding them. So, you know, you never know where things are gonna take you because you just can't let skill level stop you because this is me, this is how I play a drum set all the time. That's so damn angry, but it, I get angry because I love it. I really love it and I wanna be good. I wanna be better and I wanna just feel it. But you, know, you just like, you can't let it stop you because if everyone started and was rubbish, that's it, you just, you can't, you can't let that mindset creep in. And that's the battle. It's not, do you have the skill? It's, do you let your brain take over and go, well, there's no point in you doing that. And it's difficult, it's super difficult. I'm the worst, I get so mardy, so grumpy, like all the time because I, I can't skate, dance, and drum that well, but you've just gotta push through it all the time and just sort of force against that resistance. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> that's time. Let's talk about energy. Oh, sweet, I've got three minutes left. Yeah, I'm not going to do it in three minutes. Um, energy. So as much as time is important, it's also you, when you found the time, you need to have the energy to, to, to go things forward. That's because it's kind of hard to, to come by. Like energy is a currency. I genuinely believe this. It's like it's, it's, you've got to, you need to keep hold of it, and you, you also need to decide where to invest it and where to, to keep it. Also, when to spend it and how to spend it and what, what to give your energy to. I mean, it's always great to have a big purchase, and, and by that I mean just totally be indulgent, go, well, I'm going to spend this whole week painting and making a one meter wide giant satanic biscuit. You know, there's no reason. This now just sits in a cardboard box in my spare room, taking up way too much space. But at the time, I thought, oh, this will be funny. You know, and this was for an art show. This is for the show that I mentioned earlier. And the guy who owned the gallery was like, hey, yeah, this, that, that's cool and that, but um, do you want to just focus on getting the work framed for the show? He's like, no, I'm making a giant satanic biscuit. So she's like, oh, okay, I'll leave you to it. You know, so you've just got to find, you've got to pick your battles almost. And and sort of just identify where to, to put your energy and sort of treat things a bit like a game, like just discover where you should put your energy and make small achievable goals and just kind of like set things out like levels and, and then just decide, well actually this, this bigger project or this bigger thing I want to learn or overcome, like treat it like a, a boss battle. Just make sure you don't get stuck. Make sure that you are just always going forwards and trying to make a plan because that's when it's really difficult and you just end up like sort of floating around going, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what I'm doing or, or, or hard. And th this is it. This is none of our, all of this stuff. I'm being totally idealistic. I realize this. I'm just getting up here floating around going, guys, just do what you love and everything's great. But that's not 
true. That's 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 a tiny, tiny part of it. It is um, full of emotion and it is difficult and and it is idealistic. But I kind of think you have to be idealistic. You sort of have to be realistic and idealistic. You have to be sort of idealistic in a realistic world um, and just just identify that things are tough and you, you have to take these sentiments well I believe I try and take these sentiments and apply them to real life because like everyone hates a person who goes guys I'm just doing what I love oh just floating around and stuff you've kind of got to you got to um, lock it down and, and, and make it a plan because changing stuff is difficult I don't know if you can see this, but this fella's turning into a car. Look how, look how like, oh, he's really not enjoying that. It's because change is difficult. It's really, really difficult to change things, to make different things happen. It requires energy and force. It, it requires, like, so that's why you've got to identify how to keep this energy and how to smash through things, because changing anything, whether it's the pencil you use or the time you go to bed or <clears throat> a, a tool that you favor, like, it all requires force so you've got to like keep that energy and time it's like this it's like alchemy you've kind of got to have these little mixes and identify what you're going to do and how you how you're going to go forwards um and at the same time as sort of like sort of change is difficult i think you've just try and got to remember to stay positive like shout about what you love this oh my god the, especially at the minute just turn on any, any channel whether that's a twitter feed or or, uh, or the, uh, the news, like, sh it's full of hate. Everything is so damn negative. And more than ever, we've got to shout about what we love, the people we love, the things that we love, the things we're doing. You know, the fact that you guys are all here this morning organized by you guys to make things come together. you just got to really hold that tight and, and, and shout about it and be positive to drown out the negativity. And, you know, like, if you don't create, like, don't hate. You can't, we're all really guilty of just going, well, that's rubbish. But you never made that thing in your first first place. Do you know what I mean? It's really easy to critique, and especially with because we can do it in 140 characters. You, you just I try and just remember and think, okay, I didn't enjoy that, but I didn't make it, and I couldn't make it, so I will keep my opinions to myself. You know when your mum says, you know, if you've not got anything nice to say, don't say it at all. That should just be a blanket rule on the internet. It really should. It's not. And another piece of information, read the bottom half of the internet, and uh, it's never been more true. Um, but, like, I love this as well about things that you love. And old oh, Dave Grohl, the god that is Dave Grohl, said it best. He said, F, guilty pleasures. How about just pleasure? I love this. Like, there's so many things that you're just like, I'm really into that, but I'm scared to tell anyone. Actually, that's totally, totally true. And I highly recommend you search this. It's Dave Grohl's South by Southwest keynote speech that he gave. It's 45 minutes long. It's on YouTube. And it's just brilliant. It's super inspiring, super honest. And he's actually talking about Gangnam Style. That's what he's talking about there. He's saying that actually, like a tune that I love this year is Gangnam Style, and he's and he's and he's like because it's fun, it's got energy, it makes him laugh, it makes him smile, and you know, so screw guilty pleasure. So it's it's about that, about honestly loving something. So then, in between time and energy, I think there's this like timogy, timogy. I don't know if that's a word. There's this 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 intersection in the middle that really means a lot. That it's, it's quite hard to 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 sort of find the perfect alignment and. And it's about sort of using small amounts of time and short bursts of energy to make things happen. Like, you can't run a marathon without doing a few 10Ks uh, ahead of it. You've kind of got to put in the training, you've got to put in the work to, to go forwards and, 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 and identify that it's not that easy. You can't just go, here's a massive goal, I'm going to do it. You know, again, you've got to make it realistic. And I love this quote by Carl Chandler that opportunity does not knock. It presents itself when you beat down the door. Totally true. There's like six and a half billion people on this planet or something like that. That's a lot. That's a lot. And you can be guaranteed someone's doing the exact same thing as you. So there's a lot of people vying for attention. You've just got to go forwards and just basically, and when you do get an opportunity or even a whiff of an opportunity, you've just got to leap on it. You've got to do as much as you can. And this, hap this is how the book... Um, do Fly came about because I went to the Do Lectures, this wonderful series of events in, in Wales, and, and they have a publishing imprint called the Do Book Company where they publish uh, books by speakers who've spoken there. And I read uh, David Hyatt's book, Do Purpose, which blew my mind and was so inspired. I flipped to the back, saw there was an email address for, for the Do Book Company, and said, hello, I've just read your book. I'd love to write a book. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you know, and kindly she got back to me and was like, Hello, <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> and, but the conversations happened and I spoke about my involvement with the do lecture and stuff and just pursued it as much as I could and so the book happened and 
I got to write it, but also I said, well, I want to do the design for it, I want to do the illustration for it, I want to, you know, when you just, you've got to leap on a project, you just got to take as much as you can, and so I did the photography as well, and um, just really wanted to pursue it, but then didn't want it to end there, you know, when you're just so excited on a project, you don't want it to finish, so you want to just make any excuse for it to continue, so I was like, oh, well, I could make a, I'd make a little promo film as well, and I, and I could, I could shoot it, and write it, and edit it, and grade it and do the graphic design and do the motion graphics and all of this stuff, just trying, just trying everything. Just just to be just to make something feel whole and just to just to really pursue what you love, especially personal projects where it's like you can do everything, every single part of it, and you just will learn so much and you just feel so good because it's you. It's a total personal reflection of you. And then at the end of it you get a thing. You get a thing, a thing, a flipping book. This is something I can tell my mum I do, and she's like, oh, Right, got it, got it. Because when I say I'm a digital designer for a social media agency inside an animation company, it's like, I j speaking French, I don't know what that is, but a book, pop to Waterstones and get that. So, you know, it's just really exciting to have these, again, these physical products at the end of it. And I kind of, this is another quote that, that bookends it, bookends it, didn't think of that, is that luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. And I love that, actually. As much as it is luck, it's, it's engineering those situations to be favorable to you, to aligning yourself that if an opportunity should present itself, you're considered for it, you're, you're open to it, both the people giving you the opportunity or you making the opportunity yourself. It's just engineering those situations, you see. And as much as it is sort of waiting for it, it's, it's, it's teaching yourself those those skills and those 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 opportunities. Um, you know, this hamster's learning to be an accountant. I didn't think that's possible, but it is. You know, and if he can do it, we can do anything. But you just anything from a physical skill. I, I learned sign writing to paint one of the big Sean things, which is truly terrifying, and I, I cried and shouted so many times. But you get through it. You get through it, you get through it from 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 pixel art to. Um, motion graphics, just everyone starts somewhere and again you just think well I'm, I'm X amount of years into my career and you know I'm set as a digital designer or an illustrator or a typographer. Yeah, but you can start anything at any time and you can change what people perceive what you do and, and who you are with, with just a, a few hours investment and, and making a portfolio and sharing the stuff. It's, it feels really difficult because change is difficult. But actually, it's how you present yourself and what you're presenting. Because like, well, the most exciting thing is that this, it's free. All this stuff is free to learn. Now, you can just go, oh, God, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'll just do a Google. Oh, oh it's on YouTube. Oh, there's a 15-year-old kid telling me how to do it. Sweet. You know, it's really easy. It's really, really easy. The time and the energy and the investment isn't easy, but actually securing the information is. So, you know, take advantage of that. And then also try and find people that will help you, will mentor you, and will, will give you, I know, this little fella's like, oh, I don't really want to be a mentor. You know, just finding like-minded people who are willing to share information with you, willing to, to just take you under their wing, but vice versa, just for you to make yourself open to, to helping other people. It's a lovely feeling helping other people, especially if you can just... If you can uh, share anything that you know or, or any experiences, any little anecdotes, it doesn't have to be like this great position that is a burden to you. It, it can be anything as, as here's a story and here's, you know, learn by my mistake or, or, or here's a great link, go and, go and see that. So you know, it, it's really nice to have that two-way relationship. And that's something that I've, I personally had just recently. I finished a, uh, a, a film, which is a title sequence for a huge um, design festival in Spain called Off and made this uh, stop frame motion graphics rap video title sequence. And um, I made that as a co-director with my friend Merlin, who's, oh, <laughs> can't see that at all. But he's there, he's there, look, we've got a clicker. He's there, and it was just fantastic, just learning and just being quiet, actually. Being quiet and just listening and observing. And you know, sometimes when you're in the presence of other people, you kind of want to prove yourself, don't you? You're like, oh, I know about that too because you don't want to feel like you've been totally quiet, but actually I always found that it was way more useful if I was quiet. If I just sat, listened, observed how communication happened and, and how he would make things happen, you know? And so I, I, I always come back to this quote by this brilliant guy called Mr. Cartoon, is that you can't learn nothing when you're speaking. And he talks about being a tattoo apprentice for a long, long time. Because you just look up to those older people and you just, well, he says it, keep your trap shut, and you just observe and, I mean, he looks like a, a smasher head, and so I'd, I'd <laughs> I wouldn't argue with him ever. But as well as doing all that, I think it's being fluid and flexible. It's being able to, to allow yourself 
change and to allow your, your opinions, your beliefs, your ideas, basically your whole core to be flexible because I kind of thought, well, actually, I upgrade my phone every year, all the time. I give Apple squillions of pounds, but actually, how often do I reflect on myself and what, what do I think I know? These opinions that I made when I was 18, 22, whatever, whatever age it is, like, the world is different. I am different. My situation is different. Everything is different, actually. So why have I not bothered to go back round and reassess them and, and change them and decide on, actually, I thought that. That's pretty idiotic. That's not the same anymore. Let's, let's change. So I've kind of found that if I'm trying to be a bit more malleable and a bit more flexible, it just helps. It just means also you're a bit more adaptable to change because you're not rigid. You're not like, right, okay, well, this is me. This is who I am forever and ever and ever. You're free to, to move around a little bit more. But this is important as well. Be kind. I mean, not like this jerk. But how powerful is that cat as well? As well as being a jerk, he's hench. But like just being that, just a, the, the simplicity, you know, the simplicity of actually just being kind, being a nice person, being an approachable person, being, I don't know, just the holistic image of being a kind, good-natured soul, actually, is, is, is really means a lot to me. I'd rather be remembered for someone who was nice than, than not nice but had a, an impressive career. You know, I, I'd, I'd much rather be remembered for being a nice person, actually. And that, that's way more important. And I sort of value that ahead of everything else. And I just think everything's nicer when people are nice, you know. But as well as then all of this input stuff and trying to um, sort of... It's all these inputs, all these influences that we're talking about. Actually, you have to work just as hard to filter them out in the age of constant feeds and updates. We have to work just as hard to block all this information as we do have inputs as well. So I just, you know, whether that's a tool or whether that's just turning Facebook off for, for an hour or deleting it or whatever, just trying to find these ways, work just as hard to, to block them out and to just stay focused and stuff. Because it's difficult. It's really difficult. I mean, Jamie said it best. Like, you've got to put in the work. Like, that, that's it, sort of sometimes simple. You've just got to put in the work. It kind of gets no more complex than that. I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. I just want to... <laughs> uh, really? Because I kind of... I mean, I know a lot of people talk about failure now, but, that, but that's a really good thing that it's just such an open discussion because failure is not a negative. It's not a negative thing. It's got negative connotations, but it's not a negative experience. Um, what happens is when something happens, you know that feeling in your chest, especially if you've done something wrong and it's failed, and you just have like this aching like heart, and you're like, oh, God, I really screwed it up. And all you want to do is push that feeling out. You just want to get it away. You want to go and have a beer. You want to be nowhere near it. But actually, I kind of found that, actually, if you just hold on to it, it really squeeze it tight, like, oh, God, this hurts, and I'm crying. Actually, it's so cathartic. You sort of learn so much from it because you've just gone, oh, yeah, that didn't work out, but we're still alive. The world's still spinning. Okay, now what? You know, you, you, rather than push it away, you just sort of embrace it. And it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. That's why you want to push it away. But actually, it's not a negative, And it's, I, I found it easier to, to see it as just an experience rather than a total negative thing. Because loads of really rad, interesting, super cool people talk about failure. James Joyce says, mistakes are the portals of discovery. George O'Keefe says, whether you succeed or not is irrelevant. Making the your unknown known is the important thing. Albert Hubbard said, the greatest mistake you can make in life is to be continually fearing you will make one. I love that. And if all of these super smart people are talking openly about failure, that must mean that, oh, that's cool. It's, it's good. Actually, let's welcome it, you know? But this one means the most to me, that actually, don't take life too seriously. Like, it's not like you're going to get out alive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I quite like thinking about death quite a lot. It sort of gives you a bit of focus, you know? You're like, well, I'm just going to, you know, one day the sun will die. And uh, I say this to my wife quite a lot. It's like, do you know, we're about halfway through the sun's lifetime, actually. Uh, eventually it's going to be dead. So uh, let's do some stuff. She's like, all right. But then we, she's not really into science as much. She's like, but how long have we got? Oh, it's about five billion years. We've got, we've got time. It's right. We can have a cup of tea. But I like getting that perspective. I like thinking about that stuff, you know, because you never know what's around the corner. You never know what's going to drop into your email. You don't know what's going to um, happen to you around the corner. You never know who you're going to meet. You never know what experiences you're going to have. Because I think it's really fun to live in a constant sort of state of fun and fear. Like, actually, that not knowing what's going to happen and being really excited by it and then being like, oh, my God, but I haven't got any money and I need to pay the bills. You know, it, that, that sort of fear means you're alive, means you're feeling something, means you're engaged. It means you're terrified, but also everything's terrific. You know, it's, it's sort of finding that, that balance to get in a constant 
feedback loop to, like I said at the beginning, you know, just try and constantly reassess who you are. Am I happy? What am I doing? What am I doing in my life? Do I want to do that? I'm not quite sure. You know, like life is too short generally, like honestly, I know that's a sentiment expressed a lot, but it, it is, it really is. So if you're really not happy and stuff, and especially the power that we have as creatives, as, as people that have the, the freedom to work anywhere in the world and make something from nothing and, and make beautiful things for people around the world, like we're in a really highly privileged position. It's not real work, is it? Re like re really, like. I'm just really stressed and my, my Wacom pen's not working and oh, like that's not real like people like if you said that to a surgeon and be like mate mate that is not work like so I like to think about I like to think about real jobs <laughs> like real people doing real jobs and I think oh we just get to float around and make pixels and stuff which is lovely but I like you know again it's perspective and just constantly reaffirming who we are and what we can do not not saying that as a negative or a criticism but actually we have the power to make things and do things and affect people that's that's a super amazing thing because all of this, all of the things we do and, and the things that we want to do and where we are is, is, is about what makes you happy and what makes other people happy. Like I genuinely believe that like, happiness is way more valuable than money. Like No one got into design and art to be rich, surely. Yes, you can, I guess. I don't know. I've heard people can. I don't know. <laughs> but you, no one, none of us started this with like, I know where the money is, working 23 hours a day with client amends. <laughs> No one went, sweet, that's the role for me. You know, it, it's, it's, it's about because you love it and you want to create and you want to want to affect people. But what I want to end on is one of my just favorite sentiments. And uh, it's actually in the book. I wanted to put it in the book because it just means so much. But it's so simple because it's so honest. And it's from the... 70s film Bugsy Malone, which is an absolute classic, and, and I love taking inspiration from a kids' film of kids pretending to be grown ups but really doing grown up situations, but it's all with kids and it's all fun and good natured. It's such a strange, bizarre film, but it's just got the best sentiment in the end sequence. It says, Because if you give a little love and it all comes back to you, you're going to be remembered for the things that you say and do. End. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>